This video will provide an overview of the accounting equation and how to analyze transactions entered into a worksheet. Okay, so now we're going to see how this starts to come together. The other day we talked about this thing called the accounting equation. Remember when we said assets equals liability plus shareholders equity. And we said that it was AL, A-L-E. And I said that if we look at a balance sheet where you have assets, liabilities, and equity, it looks something like this. And I showed you the sample financial statements from this chapter where we have, you know, assets, cash, accounts receivable, inventory. These are all things that we own. Then we have liabilities. So that would be like accounts payable and loans. Those are things that we owe, right? We own assets, we owe liabilities. And then equity, it consists of what we call uh, basically common shares. There are other types of shares, but we'll just focus on these for now. And something that we call retained earnings, RE. So the equity is the investment that an owner makes into the business. And that consists of their initial investment in the company plus any undistributed or any unpaid profits. It's a, a coincidence that the two letters R and E are used, but this helps you remember. R also stands for revenues and E stands for expenses. So retained earnings is the result of revenues minus expenses, which equals profit or as we refer to net income. So that means that retained earnings has your beginning retained earnings plus income minus dividends and that gives you your ending. So what happens with the accounting equation is because this whole thing has to stay in balance. And as you can see, I have on the left side of my T assets and on the right side liabilities plus equity, which means if my assets go up, then something must compensate on the other side. Now, it's possible that if an asset goes up, another asset can go down so that basically we have up and down on the same side and our universe, our accounting universe is still balanced, okay? But let's say that we use something like an owner putting money into the business. So if I put $1,000 into my business, that's going to go into common shares. So my common shares are going to go up. And I put that in as cash. So my assets go up. Guess what? One side goes up, other side goes up, universe balanced. What we're going to see is that revenues and expenses, which are on the income statements, it's a different chapter of the story, but they, because revenues minus expenses is profit, and then as an owner of my business, I'm entitled to those profits, right? Those profits belong to the owners. So they end up on our balance sheet that you'll see through retained earnings, which means that revenues cause equity to go up. If I have revenues and no expenses, that's the perfect business right? And I don't take those revenues out, then I my revenues are the same as my profits. And if I keep my profits in the business, that increases my equity. It increases the value of my investment. When I start taking money out of the business, I'm paying myself as an owner back through dividends. So revenues cause equity to go up. Expenses cause equity to go down because they reduce profits. So what we're going to do is look at how we use a very simple approach at first to grasp how the system works. So we're gonna use a worksheet or a template approach. So what we do is we basically say on the one side, we have all our assets, and then we say that those are equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity. And we list all of these, we call these accounts, okay? Cash, accounts receivable, equipment, accounts payable, common shares, retained earnings. They're called accounts, they're really just categories. So we list our accounts, and then what we're going to do is every time there's a transaction, we're going to see what account goes up and what goes down and to make sure that our whole thing is in balance. Some key points to know here is that when we're using the accounting equation, and by the way, accounting is based on what we call the double entry accounting system. And that double entry system is what keeps the accounting equation balanced. Otherwise, we would be out of balance and be in chaos. And we don't like chaos. And the universe has a natural balance to it. If you're uh, it's into science fiction and Star Trek, matter and antimatter, we have equal amounts of those. And if we have an imbalance, bad things happen. So every transaction affects at least two accounts, two or more. We can have multiple accounts, but at least two. Each line must balance. And then uh, entries and retained earnings are accompanied by an entry in, the, in some other column that relates to revenues, expenses, and dividends. And you'll see what I mean by that. 
So I'm going to look at a very simple example here. Now, if you haven't seen this before, you look at this and now you're scared. We only look at it line by line. See, what happens, part of what overwhelms people in accounting and other courses is when they're presented with all of this stuff and it looks like, oh no, cover up everything except the first line. So let's look at on January 1st, I see cash, 250,000 and common shares, 250,000. Can you guess with the information and knowledge that you have only after a day and a half of accounting, what happened here? The shareholders invested in their company. That's it. That's exactly it. So anything that has, that's a positive number is a plus and anything that's a negative number is a minus. So cash plus and common shares plus. This is an owner investment. And that's all the information I need to determine what the heck this was. Look at this next one, January 1st. Cash, 100,000. Bank loan, 100,000. What do you think that is? A loan, right? Yeah, the creditor's loaning you money. This is a bank loan. Oh my gosh. And what we talked about the other day, remember we had three activities, operating, investing, and financing. And I said that we finance our business with cash. Cash is blood. Remember we had that whole conversation about the body. We finance our business through debt and equity. Well, debt is loan. And equity is basically shares that are issued to owners. So right away, you can see that, huh, there's a $100,000 loan and $250,000 in shares that have been injected into the business. This is the blood transfusion. Look at this one here, January 6th, minus 180,000 cash. Land plus 180,000. What do you think this is? We paid for land to buy yeah, land. They purchased land amazing and you only had a day and a half of accounting and you're able to figure this stuff out already wonderful purchase plan well isn't that now basically taking the money that went in the blood and now investing into the business itself this is the, the creation of or the acquisition of an organ we're buying organs to run our business land one hundred eighty thousand dollars. let's go down here january 12th cash twenty one thousand. ar thirteen thousand and following my pencil across here, because it's all in whatever's in each line, I have 34,000 R. What is R? Revenues. R is revenues. Okay, so knowing that and what we have in this line, can you reconstruct the crime scene? This, these are evidence. These are breadcrumbs. What happened here on January 12th? Cash received. Cash received, okay, for what? So let's say you're in the service for the For the revenues that were re Retained? Uh, okay, not no, quite retained. No. And I know where you're going with that because the thing, the revenues become uh, retained. So revenues will impact retained earnings and expenses will also impact retained earnings. So what we do is when it comes to this worksheet, rather than have accounts for all our revenues and expenses, what we do is we'll, and you see when we do it, is we'll write down what type of revenue or expense this is so we can construct our income statement. But it works like this. So because this is revenue, we're saying that the company, so you're the company, you've done work for me. You've done $34,000 worth of work. So we could say earned 34,000 in revenue because you've done the work, but you received cash of $21,000. So I paid you $21,000 now for $34,000 of work you've done. And what else? Account receivable uh, 13,000. That's right. So I give you 21,000 now and promise to pay you the rest later. So that's what accounts receivable is. Pay, if you buy something from somebody, you pay later, that's accounts payable. If you do work for somebody and they will pay you later, you will receive the money later. That's accounts receivable. In French, en français, receivable. En français, payable, receivable. That's how it works. So see, this is an example of a transaction that has three entries in it. And then we'll just pick one more here. Let's look at, let's say this one here, January 26, cash minus 2,200, minus 2,200 for E. What's E? Expenses. Some kind of expense. So we record and we paid this expense because cash is transacted. We know this is paid. If I look at one over here, but on January 10th, inventory 23 and accounts payable 23 what do you think that is we have to pay later you have to pay later so you bought inventory 
and you're going to pay later. This is like my wife's book business, ordering a whole bunch of books from the supplier yeah. and paying them later. Goes into inventory, not expense yet, because it's not until the books that are sold that the books become an expense. Okay, so that's why that's what inventory is. Inventory is a parking spot for cost of goods. So those are revenues and expenses. And the last one here, look at this on January 23rd, minus 400 cash. And I follow the row and I have minus 400 DD. What is DD? Dividend declared. Dividend. Dividend declared. Excellent. Excellent, my friends. So uh, all a dividend is a reward the owners pay themselves. It's distributing the unpaid profits. Okay, Because remember we said retained earnings is profits that are not paid to the owners. Well, at some point, the owners will want to pay themselves those profits. That's what a dividend is. So that's basically how this worksheet works. We have revenues and expenses and they will impact retained earnings. And then all the other items or other assets or liabilities and common shares is one equity piece. And that's what's happening. This goes up, this goes up, this goes down, this goes down. We're just making sure everything stays in balance. Now we have at the very end, all of these totals. Well, now this is the information that we use to generate the financial statements and some of this information too. So look at this. Isn't sales revenue R and aren't all of these expenses because they have the word expense in them, E? Now, cost of goods sold is also an E. It's the only expense that usually doesn't have the word expense in it. You could say cost of goods sold expense, but it goes without saying. So here, revenue of 34000 and look at all of these expenses. Well, if I go back to that worksheet, look at this, 34000 R. And look at all of these expenses, 1900, 2200, 2900, E, 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 E. You see where it comes from. So this worksheet is the source of the numbers for the story of the income statement. And when we take all of our revenues minus all of our expenses, we have net income. Then we said that the next financial statement was a statement of changes in equity. So what happens here? is, and, and remember we talked about this the other day, is that this is how the equity changes from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. And we said that this example I can tell is for a new company. It's a new business because the beginning balances are zero. And that means that the company issued shares of 250,000 during the year. And if we go back to this transaction, isn't that what this very first one is? The share issue of $250,000. That's what that is. That's why we have an ending balance of 250. And then the retained earnings is the beginning balance plus income minus dividends. The company started with zero and had profit of 7,400 and then paid the DD. So the ending retained earnings is $7,000, which basically means of the 7,400, the owners only paid out 400, leaving the rest in the company so that they could reinvest into other things like assets. The last one, and we had this the other day too, is our balance sheet. Isn't this section all assets? Aren't these all liabilities? And aren't this equity? And isn't assets equal liabilities plus equity? Because look mm -hmm. at this, these equal. And look at these numbers. Cash, 113, accounts receivable, two, inventory, six. Well, if I go back to my worksheet, isn't my cash, 113? Isn't my accounts receivable, 2,000? <laughs> isn't my accounts payable, 9,500? This is where the information comes from to make those financial statements. Here's my current liabilities, 9,500. I know it still can be overwhelming, but now you're starting to see how the act of an owner putting money in the business, how that action, that activity ends up in the records and how the records, the books we call them, the information gets to how we produce the financial statements. That's how we tell the story and put all of those individual transactions and events together to make the entire story. So that's how we have our balance sheet.